Hey guys, um, so um, in this video I kind of wanted to go over kind of how to, the importance for one of being able to get under your shoulders and be able to control that, right? Um, a lot of times when you're rolling, a lot of people, you might not have the choice about whether or not you get up onto your shoulders and you want to be kind of really cognizant of what that uh, position is. And so, like, if I'm passing somebody's guard, I might double under on their legs and then really stack them, and then they're going to end up into this position, right? Um, and there are other instances, instances of that. Like, if I'm in what's called bottom four quarter, which is also known as the turtle position, right? I'm going to be here. My base is wide here. I've got my elbows kind of tucked in here. The reason why I want to have a wide base is that if I'm like here and I've got that narrow base, I'm not very stable here and I can end up in a potentially worse position because I didn't have that base. So my feet, I kind of like this flat foot thing here. Um, and part of that is if I'm up, now I'm starting to give my opponent space underneath here. So um, they can start getting grips and whatnot. It's a little bit harder if I'm flat down the mat with, with the tops of my feet straight on the ground. Again, I've got that nice wide base and I'm down. And a lot of times people will kind of do this thing, right? They're crossing over their neck because they don't want to get choked. And so their arms are pinned to their chest and touching the inside of their thighs. And they're here and they want to be lower. What I find um, when we get into the um, top four quarter class, um, what kind of happens for me and makes that class particularly difficult is my husband is this little tiny guy and it's really um, difficult for me to spin around on him because he's so low to the ground and that's kind of something that you want, right? So I'm going to be low because I want it to be harder for my partner to get into a really good, great position. So there are going to be instances where you want to maybe go from bottom four quarter into guard. And so that's kind of one of the reasons why we'll do this particular drill. So what I'm going to do from the bottom four quarter here is I'm going to post my hand up. And I kind of want to be mindful of this. You don't necessarily have to do this, but for right now, to begin, I kind of want you to do it just because it's going to give you a little bit more space and make it a little bit easier for you. Um, if I wanted to, you know, I could just straighten out this bottom arm and go into that. Uh, Gamby roll to um, to get into the guard. And yes, I'm saying Gamby roll because ours are pronounced as H's in, in Portuguese, and that's the right way to say it, not grand B roll. Um, I might get shit for that. So, what I'm going to have you do is, uh, I'm going to do it from this angle. I'm going to post up and I'm going to put my shoulder down on the ground, all the way down. And I'm going to tuck my chin and Notice that my weight is on my shoulder until I get to this position. And then I'm just going to go ahead and sit down, right? So this is kind of a really cool move because a lot of times when you get there, if you can catch the arm or whatever, you can actually, instead of going to, straight to the card, you can go right into a triangle choke. So there's um, kind of a benefit to uh, this particular movement if you catch it at the right time. So from here, I drop down. No weight goes on my chest or on my neck, and then I just sit through. And that's kind of the basic, easy way to kind of start this one. Um, now I kind of want to go into a little bit more of what's called like a, a clock drill, um, which is the same thing, but we just go shoulder to shoulder. So for this one, it's exactly the same movement. So I kind of post, come around, I go both shoulders, and then I end up back where I started, right? So I'm gonna drop down, right, the right shoulder, my weight, again, is off my neck. Do not force this, right? And if you can't get it right now without putting a lot of weight on your neck, don't try to force it. Don't try to overwork this particular one because I don't want you to kind of hurt your neck and, and put it into this um, hyperflex position and, and, you know, you can get herniated discs and what, that, that type of thing. So don't, don't force it if you can't do it. Um, and really, uh, one thing that you could do especially if you've already gotten this kind of warm going back, is I can just go here, pause, and come into that bottom four quarter. So I can practice the second half of this movement if I can't get the first, right? So do what you can to kind of piece together these little, these movements, right? So I'm going to be coming straight back, boom, and 
I just come back into this. I just kind of fall to the side, bring my legs around. And that's kind of the thing is that this one, um, when we get into this position, I'm dragging my feet, right? So, you can see here, my feet, we're just dragging. We're just making this little circle. It's not like I'm coming straight to the side, though that is what we're going to go into next, okay? And again, this is exactly the same uh, thing when we don't want to be putting any weight on our neck. So, I'm going to be kind of in this kind of neutral position. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to, this is the way I learned it. Um, some people just kind of go from, go from here, and you can totally do that. I think that this opens up a little bit more of a path and makes it a little bit easier for you to kind of get started with this movement. So, the key to this one is that um, in order for you to do any roll, um, you, your hips and your shoulders can't occupy the mat at the same time. So a lot of times the way that my coach shows it, and I've never had to really do it, um, is that once that shoulder hits the mat, he digs his toe in and pushes himself up into this position and then just rolls straight through. Um, and I think that's, that's really a great starting point uh, for this particular roll. Um, Honestly, for me, like when I do the roll um, by myself, I'll just kind of tuck in and just go, and I've never really had a problem with that. But if you're really having a hard time getting the hips up and all that, use your toe. So you're going to dig down, and you're going to push up, and you roll up. And really kind of pay attention to the position you want to be in. You don't want to be here with your, like halfway down your thoracic spine. That's going to make this really kind of ineffective, right? But I also don't want to be on my neck, so... I am really, my weight is right here on my middle trapezius, right, and um, just just below the deltoids, kind of in that uh, upper rhomboid area, right? Um, and if you want to look up an anatomy, anatomy ta textbook, you can go ahead and do that, but it's like the first quarter to third of your scapula, the bones right here. So I'm here, bump, if you wanted to do uh, kind of the less assisted way, or you can drop down and use those toes to get up to that position. Now, if you're getting stuck here and you can't get over, go ahead and just do a half one. That's perfectly fine. All right. So, the last one that's kind of in this series, and I personally think that this is the hardest, um, but sometimes it actually gets people to get into the right position. Um, so it's definitely beneficial and there are definitely going to be times like somebody's passing your guard You're just going to circle around and, and disregard um, And so this is kind of a really powerful movement to get into so what I'm going to do is I'm going to get my butt as close to the wall as I can Feet up on the wall. I'm going to bridge up. I'm going to step over now Notice I'm holding this position. I'm not pushing up the wall. The wall is just there to guide me and then I fall through and I kind of pushed out um, as I fell down because I was explaining. Again, I'm not great at this one. So, I'm up, step, over, and then you get down. Now, with the shoulder roll I just showed you, you can totally do it up and down the line, right? You don't have to stop, just like with this one. Um, you get here, practicing again, not being on the neck. All the way down. Again, the point, just so you can see it since I mentioned it. This room is not long enough. So, what I have to say about these ones is don't be horribly concerned if you don't get it now. I do think that this is the type of thing that you should practice, you know every other day, once a week for a while, until these things start clicking. And I, I personally believe that this is a good thing to kind of put in early on in your training. For one, because you don't need a partner. And uh, two, because it's going to take a while for you to learn it. And once you get into techniques that require these types of movements and getting into these positions, you're gonna have a lot uh, of an easier time uh, practicing those techniques because um, you are practicing them um, in this manner and, and getting past this awkward stage so when you actually get introduced those, to, those, to those techniques you have the tools already um, so that's kind of why I'm introducing them early on we'll go over them, go over them again a little bit later on but here we are <laughs>